I'm sure you have used visual calculations in Power BI. They have been around for some time. They are not generally available, but they are quite slick. In this video, I'm going to talk about some very interesting applications of visual calculations that go beyond than what is listed in the drop down menu. You're going to like this video a lot. Watch it in the end and tell me which trick did you find the most beneficial? Well, why am I talking? Let's start. All right, my first trick is how do you add a row number to a matrix or a table visualization? And that is needed a lot of times. Earlier, people used to do some sophisticated all selected technique to be able to add row numbers. Now there is a straightforward function to do that. Let me show you how. So here I've built a very simple table visual, actually a matrix visual. So we have year, we have quarter, and we have total sales. And here is where I'd like to add a new column that shows the row number, one, two, three, four, so on and so forth. So how do you do that? I'm gonna click on this particular visual. And in the home tab, you see that we have a new visual calculation. Now, in case you have not activated visual calculations yet, I suggest that you turn on that feature. How do you do that? Go over to the file and then you go to options and settings Then again, go to options. And in the preview features, which appears in just a second, right here, you're going to see that you have something called as visual calculations right here. And you can turn that on. You might have to restart the PC, but then once you do that, you're going to be able to access visual calculations. Now let's just go back. So I have this thing, which is my matrix visualization. I have the new visual calculation appearing up on the top in the home menu. I'm going to click right here and I'm going to maybe start to add a new visual calculation. Once I click this, this kind of window that appears at the bottom, which is where you can write, edit and debug calculations, especially the visual calculations. Now let's just start to create a calculation called the row number. So I'm going to call this as an index. And let me also zoom this a bit. And I'm going to use the function called the row number function. So I'm going to say, hey, equals to row number. And I, if I don't write anything inside of that function, if I just press enter, you're going to see that you have row numbers. And if you take a look at these row numbers, you're going to see that we have one, two, three, four. And as soon as I reach at the end of the year, which is the total of the year, you have row number one. This is my first year in the matrix. When I reach my second year in the matrix, I get row number two for that particular year. So that when you're actually collapsing this particular table, if you take a look at back to the report right here, if you're collapsing this particular visual right here, you still get the right row numbers, row number one and row number two. But in case you don't want to collapse it, then I would want to turn this off. Now, there might be a need where you would want the row numbers to be reset every single year. That means one, two, three, four, we just have four quarters, but you could have products or whatever. And then you would want to have again, one, two, three, four, depending upon what you have in the year. At the moment, we just have quarter, you could have products as well. So how do you reset the row number? Uh, so I'm going to go back to my edit calculation right here. I'm going to click right here. Now in the row number function, if you just write, how would you want to reset the row number calculation? This just works fine. So if I just maybe click on year and I close the bracket, kind of select the year and close the bracket and press enter, you can see that th this actually resets every single time. So one, two, three, four, and then resets to one, two, three, so on and so forth. Now you might be asking about two things. First, hey, row numbers are not supposed to have these decimal places. So how can I get rid of that? Sure you can. That's one. The second thing is you may or may not want the totals here at the bottom. So let's just do the formatting first, then I'm going to talk about the next trick. So if you actually go ahead and select the index right here, you would have the options to format this calculation. How? If you just go over to the format and if you actually go to the specific column right here, you can select the index column in the specific columns apply set settings to index and now I can perhaps format it the way that I would want it. So I just want, let's say no decimals, I can just maybe call it zero decimals. It still shows up here. But if you take a look at the visual, it actually shows up the clean value up on the top. That's nice. Now, if you would want to turn off how the total at the year level, you will have to move on with me to trick number two as to how do you handle levels of calculations in visual calculations. Quick introduction in the video in case you're liking the video so far and you're wondering that how can I learn these skills of writing good DAX? good data modeling, the M language behind Power Query, and all of the nuances of Power BI that makes it work. I have brilliant courses on Power BI, especially the Power Query part, the DAX part, data modeling part, and the M language part. In the courses, I take you from a beginner level and take you to more advanced concepts, try to explain you the logic of how things are working so that you feel confident in applying the learnings to even on your own data sets. Hundreds and hundreds of students have joined my courses and they have benefited a lot. In case you're interested, the link for the courses is going to be down in the description of the video. Let's get back to the video. Another interesting function to handle totals is the function called is at level. It's beautiful. Take a look. So if I just maybe click on the edit once again, we have the row number and the reset of the year. But let's just say that I don't want to show anything right here. So I can use the function called is at level. And if you do that, it asks you, hey, what level are you trying to check? So I'm trying to check that if the calculation is working at the quarter level or not, if it is working at the quarter level, then I would want the numbers one, two, three, four, which is my index or serial 
numbers. But if you're actually not working on the quarter level, then I would want to turn that off. So I can just maybe feed in the quarter. Now, this particular function is at level is going to give you a true and false. So it's going to be a true here, a true here, a true here, a true here. And then it's going to be a false here. So I can wrap this around in the if function. So I can say if this particular is at level is true, then I would want to run the row number calculation. Otherwise, I want to do nothing. And if I now press enter, and if I just maybe click on commit, you can see that these calculations are off. So are they off in the visualization as well? And you are kind of good to go. This is a beautiful way to handle something that appears or does not appear in the totals row. Awesome. Let's move on to my next trick. Another very commonly found need is to do moving averages. Now, in case you were doing it earlier, this was a complex DAX function. Now it is ridiculously simple and it also limits the measure in case you just want to show it to the table. Just add it as a visual calculation and forget about it. Nice. Take a look at how this works and a few nuances and tricks along the way. So I'm going to click on this particular visual and I'd like to add a new visual calculation in the table visual or the matrix visual. Technically, I have year and the month and I'm trying to take two months rolling average. That means if I just have one month, then the rolling average is going to be the very value of the month. But if I have two months, then I would like to average these two months and write it here, average these two months and write it here, average these two months and write it here, so on and so forth. You get the idea. So I'm going to click on the new visual calculation. I'm going to call this as my moving average, MOVAVG, and I'm going to use the function called moving average. Now you can also access moving average from the drop down menu right here, which actually gives the same formula. But hey, we are writing some visual calculations functions right here. So moving average, it asks you moving average of what I can input the column of which I would like to calculate moving average. I do that. Then it asks you, hey, moving moving average for what window size. So I can just write the window size as two. That means two values. And then I'm, I can just maybe close the brackets and press enter. And this is kind of good to go. Now for the very first value, it actually gives you the value right here. For the two values, it actually gives you the moving average of these two values and then so on and so forth. Now there is one thing right here. In case you would want to find the moving average of the past two months, not including the current month, then you can also exclude that. Let me show you how. So if I just maybe go and edit this particular calculation, and if I put in another comma, you can see that we have include the current value or not. Now, by default, the row in which the calculation is running, that value, which is this particular value, is by default included in finding out the moving average. That means if your window size is two, as we have specified right here, then the two values that it's going to pick up are these two values. But if you say that I do not want to include the current value and you write false instead, then it's actually going to leave this value out and pick up the previous two values. So if I just happen to write a false here and I press enter, you're going to see that it actually writes the previous one value and then the previous two values come right here and the previous two values go right here so on and so forth to get the idea so quite customizable like that now there is one thing that is quite interesting if I, let me just remove the false in here and close the bracket and press enter there's one thing which you might or might not need is that you would want your moving averages to reset every single time so if you just take a look at the moving average for the month of January you might want to reset in the month of Jan and do not include the past December value at the moment this is 2823 and that's the moving average for the both of them but maybe I don't really want to have that so I can just go in here and I can just go in here and put in a comma and I can just maybe write the reset value and the way to do that although you can see that the reset value appears quite a bit later in the arguments so you have you might be thinking that I have to mention this argument this argument and this argument you may not have to do that you can just write the reset value so my reset value is year every single year reset the moving average I press enter and this actually resets by the year so I have to just do the tick mark sign. It commits and you can see that the moving average has been reset. So here the value is the same. So 3455 five has been reset and then the next two values appear right here. So on and so forth. That's a nice way. Now, again, the same problem at the totals level. In case you want to show or do not want to show the totals, what you can do is again use the at level calculation is at level. And I'm going to show you another interesting trick about is at level. So let's just open up the editor right here. And I'm going to say that, hey, I want to do this particular calculation when I'm working at the month level, otherwise not. So I'm going to say is at level. I want to do the month. Now, obviously, you know that the is at level, whenever it is working at the month level, it's going to give you a true. Otherwise, it's going to give you a false. Now, true and false for Power BI are like ones and zeros. So if I just happen to multiply this, so a true, which is a one, multiply by whatever value is going to give you the same value, a false, however, it's going to give you a zero. So now all of these totals actually become zero. And that's a nice way of handling that. In case you just don't want to show blanks, you just want to show zeros. It's a nice way to handle that as well. Otherwise, you can obviously 
wrap that around in the if function. Moving on to my next trick. The next thing that I want to talk about is going to blow your minds out in case you don't know about it already. It's called the rows operator in visual calculations. Let me teach you how that works. So let's just say, for instance, I have the simple matrix visualization, which is where I have the year and the band and we have total sales. And I want to see, hey, take a look at this entire column of data. And why don't you tell me the max value which is there in this entire column and write that value right here, right here, right here, so on and so forth. That's what I'm, I want to take a look at. So how do you actually do that? I'm actually going to go ahead and start to create a visual calculation. So I'm just going to go off right here and I'm going to go over to the uh, home tab and new visual calculation and I'll insert a calculation. Now I spoke about using a rows operator. Now what the rows operator does it in the mind, it imagines this entire table leaving the totals aside. So this entire table leaving the totals aside, which is this one, this one and this one, it imagines this entire table by referencing something called as the rows operator. So let's just say how this works. So I'm going to call this as my max M A X and I'm going to use the rows operator right here R O W S. Now once I do that, if you actually press enter right now, this is going to give you an error because all of these rows right here and right here, you can't feed all of these rows inside of a single cell. So what do you do about that? Well, we can do a couple of things. First off, I can actually count the number of rows. So if I just maybe write count rows right here and close the bracket and press enter, you can see that we have eight rows of data. The first four rows right here and the second four rows right here. That's what we have. Now, what we're going to see is that we can use this particular rows operator, which is technically this three columnar table, this one and this one, we can use that to our benefit. Let's just take a look. So if I just maybe go right here and if I can say, hey, I have a table which is referenced by the rows operator. So I can use something called as the max x function. In the max x function, the first part is nothing but a table. Do you have a table? Sure enough, our rows is nothing but a table. And in this particular table, I have a column called total sales. Please go ahead and in this column and find the maximum sales value and give me the, the output. So if I just maybe click on done, you're going to see that in this table combined with this table, the maximum value is 14768. And that's the value that you see all across right here. So you can use this rows operator very creatively to create very custom calculations. Now, another example of the same thing. Now you might say that, hey, this is good, but I wanted to find out that in the year and the band, what is the maximum sales per band? That means I don't really want this max to spill over to the next year's band and give me the max overall between the two years. I want to look at in the current year itself, like me just right here. There are a couple of ways of doing that. Let me show you how. All right, I'm going to start to edit this calculation. And the way that I do that is that I consider the rows as a table and I apply my own custom filters. Let's just see how can we do that. So I can delete all of this and I can happen to write my own custom filter. So using the function filter, which asks you, hey, a table as the first input. So if I just maybe start the bracket, you can see that the filter function asks you a table input. Do you have a table? Sure enough, we have a table called rows. And in that table, I would want to apply custom filters. And what are my filters? My filters are something where I would want the ear to match the current year and I do not really care about the band, right? So I'm going to go ahead and start to declare a variable before I apply the filter. So I can just say var and I can say current year and I can just maybe reference the current year within that. So if I just maybe do that, so current year, if this goes in every single row, it's actually going to pick up this particular year right here. I can also go ahead and use the selected value function outside of this. So I can just say, hey, selected value and I can just maybe write that particular value right here. And now once I go ahead and I start to do the return statement, I can say, hey, filter the rows where the year, which is this particular column, is equals to the variable that I just selected, which is this particular thing. Close the bracket. Now let's just go ahead and count the number of rows in this table that we have created. So count rows function, I can close off the bracket at the end and press enter. You can see that we just get four rows of the data because at the moment this is just filtering it down to one single year. Now let's just go ahead and pick up the max value off of this. So I can either use a max x function just as the way that I've used before, or I can use the calculate function. Let's just try both the approaches. So I can say max x here is a four row table. In this four row table, I would want you to go ahead and calculate my total sales. So total sales and pick up the max of that. Press enter and you get the max right here, which is categorical max of band. Or what you can do is if you want to use the calculate function, I can just maybe comment that out and I can go ahead and start to write the calculate function. And I can say something like calculate. I want to calculate the max of total sales, close the bracket. And I can say, hey, here is my filter that I prepared, which is this particular filter. Control C on that and maybe 
I can just do control V on that. And I'm going to close the bracket. This keeps going up and I press enter. It gives you the same value right here. And you can take a look at the code. It's the same code just as the way that we previously wrote it. But this time, this particular filter is now used in the calculate function right here. So any which ways that you want to do it, you can do it. But now that you've understood that this particular rows is quite powerful, it actually gives you the entire table that is prepared by the visual calculation. And you can apply filters, move around in that table, do complex lookups and whatnot. My last trick has to do with finding the first and the last values. Now, these could be based off conditions as well. Super helpful if you're trying to design a ledger or kind of opening balance, closing balance kind of calculations. But this is going to be super fun. Take a look. So I've got this uh, table with three columns right here, year, channel and the quarter. And we have total sales against that. Now, I would want to pick up the first value or quarter one's value of this entire year and the channel. And I want to repeat it all across. So whatever value is right here in the first cell, 1209, I want to write it right here, right here, right here, right here. Just as the way that you do it for the first value, you could also do that for the last value. Let's just take a look at how that works. So I'm going to go off to visual calculations and start to create Q1 value or maybe the first value. Now there happens to be a function called the first function. Now in the first function, it says first of what? First of, let's say, total sales. And if I just maybe close the bracket, uh, press enter, this actually gives you the first value of the entire table. That means this entire table has got the first value as 1209, 1208.97, technically speaking. And this actually repeats all across the data. Now, sure enough, there are a few other parameters as well that you can adjust. So what you can do is you can actually go ahead and st start the reset column. Now, reset column could actually be a number or it could be the mention of the column. So let's just say that if I want to reset by every single channel, that means in the channel, whatever happens to be the first value, I want to do that. Then I can just go ahead and mention the channel. I can close the bracket and this is going to mention the first value of the channel. So here the first value was obviously 1209 and that's the first value. Here the first value is 468 and that's the first value, so on and so forth. Now, in just in case, if you do not really want to hard code the name of the column, which is the channel column, you can also reference it by a number. That means this is technically column number one, which is the outermost column, then column number two and column number three, so on and so forth. Well, the way that you do that is just write the column number. So if you just maybe go ahead and cancel out the channel and if you just write number two, nothing is going to change the same result. But if you were to write, let's say one here, that means it is now referring to the outermost column, which is column one, column two, and this is column three. Now, every single time the value of this particular column changes, it is going to find the new first value. That means for all of this, these values, once I commit to this particular formula, it's going to pick up 1209, which is right here and mention it across this particular column. Click and that's what you get. Now, if, yeah, if I maybe go ahead and take a look at 2012, that's the first value 4071. And that's the value which is repeated right here. That's nice. All right. Let me know in the comments, which trick did you find the most helpful in case you would want to learn some very interesting power query tricks. I will let you watch another video of mine and I'm going to see you in that video. Cheers.